Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chidinma and I'm a college junior at DePaul University and I'm studying public health. As you can see from today's title, this is going to be how to stay sane as a STEM student and get good grades at the same time. Before starting college, I heard so much about STEM students and how hard their coursework was, but I have managed to stay on Dean's List every single quarter except one my entire college career and I think I have some pretty valuable tips on how to do the same. So continue watching this video if you want to know how to get good grades as a STEM major, how to study, and how to organize while at the same time taking care of your mental health. So before I officially start this video, I first want to let you guys know more about my major and the classes that I'm taking. So I'm in the College of Science and Health and my official major is Health Sciences, but my concentration is Public Health. At my school, you could be a Health Science major and also have a concentration in Biomedical Sciences. That's usually for people that want to go to med school, but that is not my plan at all. I have taken many classes at DePaul, but I do want to focus on my major specific courses because gen eds can be taken by anybody of any major, and that's not really what this video is about. First, I took Bio 191, which is freshman bio. I only had to take one quarter of it, so I didn't have to take it for the full year, and that was enough. Alongside bio, I took Introduction to Health Sciences, which is self-explanatory, and then I took Introduction to Public Health, which I really, really liked and kind of solidified my passion for being a public health major. Those classes were taken freshman year of college. The rest of the classes I took that year were simply general education courses and stuff I had to get out of the way. Sophomore year, I took health care policy in the United States. I really enjoyed that class and I really wish that it was in person. It was completely online. We didn't even have Zoom at all, but it was a very interesting course and it kind of helped me understand the healthcare system in the country because it is pretty controversial. I completely forgot what classes that I took. I was blanking, so now I open my school's progress report that basically shows me what classes I've taken so far so we're gonna try that again. Sophomore year I started off the year by taking healthcare policy in the U.S. I also took a statistics course it was just statistics 101 but it was through the psychology department so I don't really know what that was about but it was stats and I actually got an A in that class I was so shocked because I'm not a math person but I did have to take a stats class for my major. I also took human pathogens and defense which is a fancy way of saying micro biology. We just studied viruses and bacteria and all of that stuff. I also took biomedical ethics which counted as a philosophy course and also a health ethics course as well. I really liked that course because we would debate really hot topics in the biomedical field such as when you take somebody off of life support and stem cell research. Those are all of the courses that I took related to my major last year and now I'm going to tell you guys what I'm taking first quarter of my junior year of college. Right now I am taking human form and function which is essentially anatomy. One thing about DePaul is that they like to rename these classes to make them sound fancier but it's really just microbio and anatomy. I'm taking that course now which has a lab component and then I'm also taking social epidemiology which is the study of disease prevention. That's it for now. Those are the two courses that I'm taking for my major this quarter. However, I am also taking geographical information systems which is a gen ed at my school but I realized that the class does a lot of work with mapping and stats and that could be really helpful for my major anyways so even though it's one of the last gen eds that I have to get out the way it is pretty beneficial. I forgot to say that I also took medical terminology sophomore year. I forgot about it because it was only a two credit class and I just took it to kind of brush me up on things because I knew that I was going to be taking anatomy and microbiology and I will say that the class actually has helped me a lot because I now know where certain things are in the body and there's a lot of overlap between the classes so I actually can figure out where things are located and it helps me in anatomy a lot but those are the classes that I've taken so far and now I'm going to get on to how I stay organized as a STEM student.
The first thing I want to talk about is how I take lecture notes and of course I'm doing this from a cafe because that is the only place that I can really study at. Most of your college courses will either have an online or an in-person lecture and as I've grown as a college student, I found myself preferring recorded lectures online rather than listening in person. This is because I can pause, rewind, speed up, and skip ahead of my professor's voice. If you primarily have in-person lectures, ask your professor if they would be comfortable with you recording their voice because some professors can get a little weird about that. Anyway, most professors will have a PowerPoint to go with their online or in-person lecture. My method of taking lecture notes is copying down everything on the PowerPoint slide and then also adding things my professor emphasizes verbally with a different colored pen. As you can see, I primarily take notes by hand. I used to use Notion and Word docs in my earlier years, but I find that I retain information better when I write it down. I can also add drawings and extra notes on the side. As a science student, drawings are especially important for my understanding of anatomy and biology. My favorite pens to use are the Muji brand in any color, and I also like to use mild liners for highlighters because they don't bleed through as much. I approach taking textbook notes a little differently. This is because textbooks tend to have much more information in them compared to your professor's condensed lecture notes. For one, I always make sure to write things verbatim from the book, especially if they are highlighted, and I also copy down any vocab word for word. I like to read each section of the textbook, like a paragraph, and then write down what I need to know. I also either draw pictures or print them out. I obviously cannot draw skeleton parts, so I'll have to print that out later. In many of my science classes, the professors have created study guides for midterms and final exams. My textbooks will also have questions at the end of every lesson in each chapter. When it's time to study for an exam, I'll type up and print out the study guide from class or the questions at the end of the textbook and then add answers in from the notes I've written for that class. Then I will use the active recall study method to review. I will explain out loud to myself what the concept is in my own words. And as time goes on, I'll begin to retain more and more information. So now I'm about to show you guys my Notion tour. I use Notion to organize all of my classwork and my assignments, due dates, everything like that. I've been using Notion since my freshman year of college and I had a really big elaborate spread my freshman year, but I was very inconsistent with it and I didn't really use it that much last school year. We have my laptop right here. Now we are going to open. I'm only gonna be showing you guys my school spread. I do have other spreads, but I don't feel like showing those ones because they aren't really developed yet and I haven't branched out into using Notion for other things like content planning and brainstorming ideas, finances, anything like that yet. So when you first open my Notion spread, you see the home screen. I didn't really do too much with this one. I did change up the weather patterns and the little widgets on there, but other than that, this came the same way that I got it from the creator that I got it from. It says Chidinma's Life 
because I do plan on using this in the future for everyday life things, but for now, I am using it for school. We have this little green tea gift. I did not add this, this came with it. I added the 7, 16 p.m. on a Friday, and then I also added the Chicago weather. I also have this indie Christian playlist. There was already a Spotify playlist linked onto this homepage, but I changed it because I wanted something different. It's just for the aesthetics. It's not for listening for real because I have Spotify on my laptop, so I'm fine. I also added all of these pictures, like the flowers and the picture of Chicago, and then these little drinks here at the bottom. As you can see, this home spread has a lot of different things. We have upcoming events. I actually wrote a few things down here. And then we also have underneath relax, small thoughts, to watch list, wish list, and bucket list. Now we're gonna go on to the course schedule. This GIF was created by the user that made this template, and then so were some of these pictures. But I did add a few things. I also just wanted to keep the green going because I did like that aesthetic a lot and I couldn't really figure out how to add gifts on. So I'm gonna keep the gifts for the most part. First, we just have this quote that says, you are far too smart to be the only thing standing in your way. And then we also have the courses underneath. We first have human form and function. And on the bottom, I just have the days and the times that that class is. I also have a little icon with an emoji that corresponds with the class. So for human form and function, it's an anatomy class. So I just put a heart emoji. If you open up the actual tab, you can see a bigger part of the picture. And then I just have the course ID and the schedule. And then I also have deadlines and due dates. So I just put the content and at the date that it's due and then if it's completed or not. And I filtered this part just to show only this class. There's also the grade calculator, which I'll use a lot later during the school year. But honestly, I don't even know if I'll use it too much. And then we have the syllabus. It's still loading because there are a lot of pages here, but I just felt that it would be easier to put my syllabus here so that when I am crossing things off of my to-do list on Notion, I can just quickly see what else is next on my syllabus. Then we have unit notes here, but I'm mostly committed to taking notes by hand. I just think it works out for me better, so I don't really think I'm gonna be using this that much, but just in case, I kept it. So this is a larger look at what this particular page looks like. We have Anatomy Lab, which is the second component of my anatomy class. Then we have African American Politics, Black American Music, Epidemiology, and Geographical Information Systems. For the pictures, I try to find things that kind of went with the theme of the class. If you scroll down, a little more you have more of a calendar you can do it in two different ways there is the calendar view that just shows you like a full length calendar with all the due dates and stuff. And then there's the table. I like the table better because it just helps me visualize a lot easier. And I have all of my coursework that is due within the next week or so posted here. So I have the content, the date that it's due. And then I have the class. I have them color coordinated. And then whether it's completed or not, if I complete something, all I have to do is just click it and it's done. So that is basically the gist of my academic page. I know it was a little short showing you guys this, but like I said, I haven't really developed the other pages and I mainly wanted to show you guys what I use the most, which is the university tab. That's it though for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that all of these tips helped you. I hope that you guys have a great school year, especially if you're STEM students. I know it can be really hard, but I hope that these tips helped you figure out how to organize your life, study, take notes, and just overall keep your mental health good even throughout a really tough school year. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Plus turn on post notifications to be notified each time I post a new video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.